Hello, I'm Allison, and today on Thinking Outside the Box, I am going to show you how I created this old world medallion. This is created with polymer clay, and I have incorporated the faux dichroic glass um, gems that we made in my previous video. So I used the Rivoli uh, round gem for this. I have not finished off the back yet. I am going to do that and put a hidden bale on it to create a pendant for a necklace. But this is what we are going to create today. So the supplies needed to create this, let me zoom out. You are going to need some polymer clay and I used Primo Sculpey Black. You are going to need some graduated circle cutters. And these are eight different sizes in this set. Um, actually, the new set up in RJ Craft Shop, you get nine. You're going to need this deep red stamp, and this is the rosette flower. And it's very deeply etched, so it gives a great impression. You are going to need some work tiles, your blade, of course, your gem, some easy epoxy clay, and you can get this at RJ Crafts. I will have the links to everything in the description below this video. You're gonna need some texture for the back of your pendant. And I just use this organic texture here on the back just to give it a little bit of texture. And this was scrap clay, so it's got specks of silver in it. And last but not least, you're gonna need some silver leaf. And you can use whatever silver leaf that you have. It just comes in a sheet. You're gonna want the kind that comes in a full sheet. So that is it. I'm gonna go ahead and get set up and I'll be back. Alrighty, I am back and I have my clay fully conditioned and rolled out and put on my tiles. This I rolled to the third thickest setting on my pasta machine and that's what we're gonna use for our stamps. And this I rolled out to the fourth thickest setting on my pasta machine. Uh, one is the thickest. So we are going to use those for that. So I'm just gonna set that off to the side and we're gonna work with, <clears throat> with the stamp first. I'm gonna zoom in just a little so you can better see what I'm doing. <clears throat> the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to cut off some excess clay because we really don't want to waste the silver leaf. So I'm just going to place my stamp down onto my clay and I am going to get my blade and cut away along the edges. And pull that excess up. All right, go ahead and smooth that out a little. Make sure it's firmly on your tile. And the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get your silver leaf out. And it, this one comes with 25 leaf sheets. They're five and a half by five and a half. I know RJ Crafts has some smaller ones that would pretty much fit that perfectly. And I believe she has those listed in her shop. So I'm gonna go with one that I've already started that already has some missing pieces. And do not breathe, do not sneeze, do not have a fan going. 
this stuff is, see how easily it ripped in my hand just from the oils in my hand? I mean, it just wants to fly away and there's like nothing going on in here. I've turned all fans off, air conditioning, everything. This stuff is crazy thin. So you wanna go ahead and put that on your clay and smooth it out. Doesn't matter if it has crinkles in it. I'm gonna grab a little extra and stick it in the spots that are missing, which don't really need it because um, those are the ends. We're not even gonna be using those, but we'll just go ahead and cover it all up. And this stuff will even stick to your tile. It's just incredible. <laughs> All right, so we'll get the extras off the edges and I even save the little flakes and you can just put those right back into your sheet. Scooch that back in there. All right. Then your next step, once you have that smoothed onto your clay, you don't want to rub too hard, but you know, you want to rub enough where it's smoothed on there. You're going to take your stamp and you're going to go ahead and do your image. And you're going to want to push pretty hard because you want to get all that clay into those recessed areas of the stamp. And I like these deep red stamps because the back this foam is it's almost like a memory foam so it's really easy on your fingers when you're doing this a lot of stamps are hard on the back and on the back side of them but this one's really soft i mean literally like memory foam <laughs> so you just do that all the way around get every spot Make sure you haven't missed anything. And what I also like to do once I've done this is take my acrylic block and go ahead and push down on the stamp. And you don't need any release because you've put the foil on the clay, so your stamp is not going to stick. And you go ahead and pull it up, and there's your imprint. And you've got some crackle, and I'll show you at the end how I got this to look more aged. So that's your imprint, and if you see, it's very raised. It's an excellent stamp. These wash off because there's some silver foil left on it. You can wash these with soap and water. You don't have to worry about the backing on it. Um, it washes and it's perfectly clean. So our next step is we're gonna take our cutter and I used that wasn't that cutter. Whoop. I used this cutter here, and if I had a ruler, I do. This cutter here measures about two and a quarter inches. Yeah, two and a quarter inches. And it actually fits this perfectly. So we're gonna go ahead and cut our image out. And you line it up the best that you can. And 
and just turn it and check it. Make sure that's where you want it. And that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my acrylic block and push down on this. And then kind of a wiggle it a little bit to loosen it. You can also turn it. And there's our cut. Pull off your excess clay and you can save this. Put that in your scrap clay pile. <clears throat> now we want to pull this up off of our <clears throat> Excuse me, I have had a frog in my throat since I had that stupid cold for 10 days. Now you want to pull this up off your tile, and I'm not going to use that blade. I'm going to use my flexible blade. And let's see, I've been having issues trying to pull clay off the tile. There we go, perfect. And... Now you just want to go ahead and go around and clean up your edges. And I bet some of you are like, yes, she's cleaning up her edges before she bakes. <laughs> this project you need to, because in the end, you don't really want to have to sand anything. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there and we're going to put this off to the side because we're going to make our backing. And for that, we are going to use this. This is the one that I rolled out to a number four and we're gonna go ahead and get our texture out. And I like this texture here. I will have a link to these. Um, below in the description. So I just take it, fold it, and push it down in there. You could also roll it through your pasta machine to give it the texture too, but I just like to do it like this. All right, for our backing, we are not going to use the same size that we used on the medallion, and I will show you why. We are actually gonna go a step down. And what you wanna do <clears throat> is get out the next three cutters from the one you used. So these are graduated. This is the one that we used for the medallion. This is the one that we're gonna use for the backing. And these two, and I'll show you why we're gonna use those two in a minute. All right, so we're going to cut our circle out for our back. And we do that the same way with the acrylic block. turn then we are going to <clears throat> cut out two more circles I'm sorry three more circles so these were all graduated now we're gonna go with our third circle. And our last circle. It's like a piece of plastic on there. It looked like a hair. All right. Now we are going to pull up our excess clay
and we are going to take our clay off the tile. So we'll start with these. And I think I'm gonna stand up to do this because it usually works better for me when I'm standing. So there's one, two, and get them out of the way. Three, and our backing. All right, you wanna clean your edges up. And because our texture's on this side, we are going to put that down. Because <clears throat> we want that on the outside of our pendant. <clears throat> the next step that I'm gonna do is, I actually learned this from Teresa Salgado, and she's at Teeny Tiny, <laughs> Tiny Pandora, not Teeny Tiny, Tiny Pandora. I always say Teeny, I don't know why, but it's really Tiny, Tiny Pandora. She did this on her cuff bracelets to give it a domed look. A lot of people will put um, a piece over, say, you know, you need bigger piece, but over glass to kind of dome it. Or you could use a metal bowl, you know, something to give it kind of a dome. And I actually have pebbles that I use to dome things. But the other day I watched a video with her making her beautiful bangles and you should check that out because they look so easy to create. In fact, I wanna try some of them. But she did this doming and I thought I can use that on a pendant. So that's what we're gonna do. And you don't really need to clean your edges up but I'm just kinda of gonna tap them in. And you can also use scrap clay for this. I did not use scrap clay. Um, I just used the black for the project. But the next thing you're going to do is you're going to lay these, you're going to layer them. That's why we have the graduated cutters. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, measured you know, on each side, just as long as you can get it as close as you can. Then go ahead and put your next one on. And what this is going to do is it's going to dome your piece and it's also going to give it a little weight. Polymer clay is, is really, really light. And, you know, this isn't super heavy, but this feels like a medallion. I mean, I'm liking how that weight feels on that. So then you take your last one and you put it on top there. So what we've done is if you look to this from the side is we've layered them and we've raised the surface up. So now you just kind of want to pull it down and kind of smooth it off. You're just doing this lightly, not heavy, but you're just kind of smoothing the edges all the way around. So you just don't have a jagged edge. Then you're going to pull this up off your tile and you're going to go ahead and get your first piece that you did of your medallion. And what I like to do is I like to put that face down, turn this over because we're working upside down now and go ahead and put that on the back so that you've got it centered. Then you're going to pick it all up and you're just going to start pulling this down along the edges. And you don't need to use anything to make the clay stick together because you are doing raw clay on raw clay. And you're gonna go ahead and come back here 
and smooth your edges out. And come back up here, smooth your edges out. And if you've distorted it any, in any way, you can get yourself back to that round shape. And then I like to just smooth this out a little more, these edges that meet each other. Just smooth the back out along that edge so it's just not a sharp edge. And this is also a time that you could add mica powder to the back of this. You could certainly use the silver leaf back here too. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. And then any edges will get that leaf as well. So go ahead and get that out. Oh, I got one already started right here. And just lightly, because you don't want to lose your front sides um, impression that you made. So you don't want to push hard on this, but you want to get enough on there. And now it doesn't want to break away. I'm gonna pick it up and go ahead and pull this off. Go ahead and put this away. And if you happen to get some on the front, you can easily get that off because it's not really going to stick to anything. You can just pull it up with your exacto knife. So you're just cleaning up the extra silver leaf. And that's it. Just smooth it all out. And it sticks to your fingers too. Smooth your edges, smooth your back. And I'm not gonna do anything with that because I'm going for an aged look. So I want some of that black to show through. And after we bake this, I'll show you how to get more black to show through on the back if you like it like that. All right, I'm gonna grab another tile because that one needs to be cleaned up. You've got silver foil everywhere. So I'm just going to clean this one. And we're going to go ahead and put this on our tile. And we are going to bake this at 275 for one hour. <clears throat> I'm sorry, 275 for one hour. And when that is finished, I will be back. Okay, we are back and 
our piece is out of the oven. It is fully cured and cooled down. And it's really easy to come off the tile because we used the silver leaf on the backing as well. So we have this very nicely domed piece. See how it's raised around all the edges. So we can move that out of the way now. Now the next step is to put one of our gems that we created in a previous in the previous video to this one and I will have a link to that tutorial in the description below this video. So we are going to put that onto here. Now you could have used a crystal if you wanted to instead of making your own faux gem. Um, you could have done that and you could have baked it while, you know, while it was in there because it was glass. I do not suggest putting resin in the oven. Uh, I just not a fan of doing that. So how are we going to put this on here and not be able to bake it, you ask? And it also has a bit of a bezel around it. Well, I'm about to show you, but first, before we get to that, I want to show you how I like to age my pieces. As you can see, this has a lot more of the black showing through. And all I do for that is take a piece of sandpaper, and this is a 220 grit. Um, you can get sandpaper at the dollar store, at the Dollar Tree. They've got tons of it, it's dirt cheap. It's sandpaper. You use it for a little while and you throw it out. No sense in spending a bunch of money. So if you have a Dollar General or a Dollar Tree where you can get quite a few sheets for a dollar, big sheets, I cut this down so that I could make it manageable to work with. And you, you'll have enough sandpaper probably for a year if you do it that way. So we want to kind of age the back a little. I don't want all this silver showing through. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my sandpaper and lightly just sand wherever I want. And you will be taking up some of the silver foil that's back there. And you do it as much or as little as you want. That is completely up to you. You can take it like that and rub it on there. And it just gives it kind of a worn look. And you just keep doing that until you're happy with the results. And you do the edge a little bit. Now you want to be careful just to have a light hand when you do this because you don't want to take all of your silver leaf off. And I do that for the top as well. And you can just run it lightly over the top wherever you want, taking as little or as much away as you want. I do a little bit in the middle. You're not going to see all of that in the middle once we put our gemstone on there. And I even go in between the grooves and get a little out of there too. And that really gives it a nice aged look. And you just keep going until you're happy with the way your medallion looks. And that is all up to you. 
So I think I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to now wipe this off with a t-shirt and I'll do that off camera because it happens to be the t-shirt that I'm wearing. <laughs> and I forgot to turn my air conditioner off. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll I'm be back. right back. The reason I did that is because we are gonna be using the silver foil again. And that stuff is, like I said, you cannot breathe, you cannot cough. You barely can look at the stuff without it flying away. So we have a nice aged look to the back. And what I think is a nice aged look to the front. And now we are going to put our gemstone, our faux dichroic gemstone that we created in the last tutorial. We are going to put that on there. And what I do um, to help me measure out, we're gonna use our epoxy clay for this next step. And you're gonna wanna have some baby wipes handy because you're gonna wanna wipe your fingers off or you can use gloves. I just don't like using gloves, so unless I really have to. And it's suggested that you wear gloves with this because it is very sticky. Um, this particular part is very sticky, but I just wipe my fingers off right away with a baby wipe. So you're going to want to make about a 15 millimeter ball. And this is actually polymer clay. I'm not gonna use this, but I'm gonna use this as a size guide for mixing up my epoxy clay. Because once you use this, once you mix this, you have got to use it. So I hate wasting anything. So I am going to try and get that size from these two. And then that way I've not wasted. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more and go ahead and show you how I mix these. Now you're going to take, wow, I didn't clean my area up after I sanded. All right, so you're going to take a little bit from each one of these to produce a 15 millimeter ball. And you just go ahead and open them up. This is your part A, which is your color. And this is your part B, which is your hardener. When you mix these two, it will be black again. Also, RJ Crafts has in their shop white. The thing I love about this, I'll just talk about this real quick, because <laughs> you know I like to ramble. The thing I love about the epoxy clay is it's air dry, dries within 24 hours, it's rock hard, you can affix anything to polymer clay with it. Crystals, faux gems, um, whatever else, what other inclusions you want to put without having to bake your piece again. And you can also use mica powder and foils and silver leaf and all sorts of stuff on this. But you do have to remember that you have a working time that you need to work with because it does start to uh, dry fairly quickly. I think you have probably about 20 minutes where it's still pliable, you can still move it around. So you, you know, you're gonna wanna put your mica powder or your gems or crystals or whatever you're gonna do into it quickly and then leave it to dry for a full 24 hours. So I have the black, but she also does have white in the shop. You really don't need any other colors because you can colorize it. You can even paint it after it's dry. But if you wanna use micas on it, go ahead and use those while the product is still soft. So I'm going to take a little bit from here because I have to think of what's half, 15, half of 15 millimeters because I have to take the same amount from the other side. So I think that's probably about right. Now, because I touched part A, I do not want to touch part B, which is the hardener, 
without having clean hands. I need to clean my fingers because I do not want to cross mix or contaminate the product. It's just like you, if you were to do the hardener first, you don't want to touch this until you've cleaned your hands. All right, get that, got those all clean, got to dry them off. Don't want to mix baby white juice in with it. All right, now you're going to take about the same amount of the hardener, the same amount ball, and that looks pretty good. Go ahead and close these up. <clears throat> and now you're going to mix these two together and you're just gonna knead them together until you get a complete solid black. And I'm pretty sure that's the reason that they have the hardener a different color so that you can see if you have stripes in it like that, you can see that you've mixed it all up when it's completely solid. So you just keep doing this until you've got it all mixed. You want to do it very well. Make sure that the hardener is all mixed in with the clay, the epoxy clay. This is not polymer clay we're using. This stuff is amazing. You know, like if you've made something with polymer clay and then you forgot to add something to it, you can even use a little bit of this where it's out of sight to affix things. It's just like glue, except it's malleable and you can shape it into pretty much any size or any shape that you want. So we're still just making sure that it's totally mixed. All right, now the next step, we are going to roll this into a ball. And I'm gonna put this down, wipe my fingers off, get all that epoxy clay off my fingers because it, that black really sticks to it. All right, now I'm gonna wipe the baby wipe juices off my hands. And if you look, I'm pretty close. This was our polymer clay ball that I used to size. And this is just slightly smaller, but that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and put that off to the side because you do not wanna confuse that because if you stick it to the polymer clay, it's not going to cure because it's polymer clay. Now, Find center on your piece and go ahead and put it on there. And then take your gemstone and center that and just push. And that's all there is to it. You wanna push it down on there. Look at it from the sides. You wanna kind of pull your epoxy clay up to the edge and if you don't want to pull your epoxy clay up to the edge that's fine because once this is dry that that uh, faux, faux gemstone, is, gemstone isn't going to go anywhere it's staying it's going to be glued on there now I want to make sure that I'm center I'm a little off which is fine you can just manipulate it And I do have a little bit of cracking and I can smooth that out, but you know what? I don't want to because this is an old world medallion and I want it to look old. Make sure I'm centered. And I'm kind of just pulling a little bit up here. up to the edge of my gemstone. 
All right, that looks good and centered. Now, I like to do, actually our next step is we're gonna put some silver foil or silver leaf on there so that it matches the rest of the pendant. You could leave it black if you want to, but I want to uh, go ahead and put some on there. So we'll get our silver leaf out. That was the whole reason of turning the air conditioning off. And take a little bit. And we're just gonna go around and stick it right on there. And if you get a little bit on your gemstone, that's fine, we can wipe that off. So you're just putting it where you want it. You don't have to completely cover it because you want to do the crackle effect on it or aged look. And we can't sand that yet to, to do that, so. Now if you get some on your gemstone, just go ahead and use your fingernail and you can get it right off. And that's just the silver foil. You can clean it too once your piece is dry. So I'm just gonna take a little bit more and add it over here where I missed. And just a little bit more. Well, that's really little. one spot that I missed. All right, I like the way that looks, so I'm gonna leave it alone. And then I don't even have to sand it. And I'm gonna go around and just make sure that move that foil back off the gemstone. But like I said, you can do that after this epoxy clay is dry also. And then the last step, how I did on this one, is I just added a little bit of um, texture to give it a little more dimension. And I did that with these Sculpey Etchin Pearls. Um, these are wonderful tools to, you know, if you're making leaves, you can, um, put the texture in like that. They also have this on the other side, which is an indentation. And when you push it down, it'll, whatever's behind it, whatever clay is behind it will push in there and give you texture. So I'm going to use the smallest one and you get a set of three of these. And I'm just going to take this end of it and lightly push into the epoxy clay just to make these little circles, which will just give it a little more character and a little more dimension than just leaving it flat. And you're just gonna push lightly because you do not wanna move your stone around. You've got it how you want it. And it's soft, the epoxy clay is soft, so it's easy to put texture in. And I think I'm back to the beginning. And it's that simple. Now you have a little bit of texture around your stone. And once this is dry, that is not ever going to fall out. That is not going anywhere. And you didn't need to put that back into the oven to bake it. So let me just wipe the stone off. Shine it up a little because I got my fingerprints all over it. <clears throat> and there you go. You have an old world medallion with a gemstone that you created. How awesome is that? You created the whole thing. Now, my suggestion once this is dry is you, you probably don't wanna put UV resin on it where you could brush it on with like the 
Tiny Pandora Deep Shine. If you want it shiny, go for it, do it, because you're gonna wanna put something on here to protect this silver leaf. Because in time, it will, you know, it'll start rubbing off and then it will look even older. And if that's the look you're going for, go for it. Um, if, if you want it just how you made it, then you're going to want to put something on there to protect that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a couple coats of Verathane, and that's the water-based Verathane. Um, it'll give it just a little bit of shine, not as much as the UV resin would, but it will also protect it. And once I put my hidden bale, once I figure out what my top is, and I put my hidden bale on the back, which I'm also going to use the epoxy clay to do that, because I have put my resin gem in there and I don't wanna put it in the oven. So you can also make a bale with your epoxy clay and you just slap it right on there and it's gonna stick. That stuff's like glue, it's awesome. So there you go. Two old world medallions. This is the one that I created before and this is the one that we created today. Now, I wasn't going to do a giveaway for this tutorial, and I'm not even going to mention it in the description. So if you watched this tutorial, this is what you need to do to enter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this off, or I can leave it just as a big cabochon if the winner wanted to incorporate it into say beaded embroidery. So you let me know if you want a bail on the back of it or if you want it as is. But one person two weeks from today, and I didn't look at my calendar to see what that day is, um, but the day that I post this video, which is Friday, two weeks from that day, you, I am going to pick one random person to win this medallion. All you need to do to enter is to comment, like, and share. That's all you need to do. Share to Facebook or to Pinterest or to Twitter or to Instagram or to your blog if you have a blog. But share the link to this video and comment and like this video. If you wanna to subscribe to my channel, that would be super awesome. I would really appreciate it. If you subscribe, go ahead and click on that bell. That will give you notifications whenever I put up a new free tutorial. So that's all you need to do to enter. So if you watch this tutorial and you waited to the end, you will know how to enter the giveaway for this medallion. So that is it. Happy Friday to you all. I hope that you have a fantastic weekend and I may not have a tutorial next week because hubby and I, it's our 12 year anniversary on the 12th of May and we're gonna go away for a little getaway. So, there may not be a tutorial, but I also may do one this weekend and have it ready to go and post it either on Tuesday or Friday of next week. So that'll be a surprise. But anyway, enough of my babbling. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you found this tutorial fun. I hope that you found it helpful and I really enjoy bringing them to you. So until next time, bye for now. Thanks for watching.